Welcome back, folks, to the Mel Wright Show. This is episode 156. It's going to be a discussion between me and my co-host, Robert Newman, and we're going to delve into some detail about SEO, search engine optimization, and how to apply it to you, the real estate agent, how to make you more visible in your local market and make your website a real lead generative platform. So this is your bread and butter, Robert. This is what you have done for a number of years. How do we start the conversation off for our listeners and viewers, Robert? Actually, I would like to start it the same way that you and I started it privately. Like I would like to say this. Today, John, I talked to a luxury real estate broker who has been uh, in Mexico selling out a very large luxury resort. So he finished that project, and now he heads back to where he calls home, which is a city in near, very near Aspen called Basalt. So Basalt is an average real estate market. It's a small town up in the mountains, and, and uh, the home prices are about three to 500000 Aspen, which is five miles down the road, is $7 million average. Okay. And his question to me was, how do I get past the noise and the clutter of all these other marketing systems that are focused on this really small, high value luxury marketplace? That's what he he asked me. And I just spent two and a half hours on the phone with him having that conversation. So I'd like to kind of kick it off, if you don't mind, by saying... So I think like most real estate agents and brokers, he had a very limited budget. His maximum budget for all marketing combined was $1,000 a month. And that's at the tip top of his scale, which means that he's not qualified to use Boomtown. He's not qualified to use real estate webmasters. He could get into one of the less expensive systems like Real Geeks or Easy Agent Pro, or he can build a custom website. Or MailRite. Or MailRite and try to... But his thing is he needs a lot of immediate lead generation from what is in real estate. Honestly, if we're just being truthful about it, it's smaller budget because $1,000 a month isn't much when you want leads right now in a luxury market and try to close a deal for a $7 million home. I mean, look at the math. Like it just doesn't work that way. So he was asking, what's my solution? So what I told him and what, I, what, what, what we, we just started to discuss because we've had guests on the show recently and I'm just going to go down your Facebook page and, and read off a couple of them um, that have all been talking about personal branding. Like uh, we had uh, Josh Eldridge on the show and he was amazing and we had um, uh, somebody else on the show and I'm really sorry, but I'm forgetting their name, but, but they, I mean, we've had two shows back to back where these guys were really great at talking about at well, a we very had, high we level. Had, we had Rick on last week, didn't we? we Rick on. Yeah. And he was really good too. He had a lot of amazing things to say. What I'd like to talk about this show is making it a little bit more specific and using this, this analogy, this, this one client. And of course you chip in, but I know that in many ways we agree, but what I told him is that the way you get past the noise is you establish a personal brand. You, John do that very well for MailRite and uh, your other business as well. Uh, um, And you do that through podcasts. But here's what I believe these podcasts do. They introduce an audience to you personally, John. They let you see who you are as a guy. Because if you listen to enough of these shows, you actually get a measure of of your personal character and your knowledge base on the topics that you're talking about. You have a very inquisitive mind and you you ask a lot of great questions. I think that a local realtor, what the advice that I gave this guy, so his wife is a photographer. She's like, that's what she does as a hobby. And I told them to leverage Instagram. And then I sent them to Joyce Ray and Christoph Chu, who are two luxury brokers here in Beverly Hills in Southern California, which is a slightly different marketplace. But they both are generating actual leads that convert into revenue for homes that have a value of anywhere between $5 million and $35 million. So to, to put that really succinctly for our audience now, find somebody who is an example that is already doing that thing that you want to do. And how did Joyce Ray and Christoph Chu cut through the noise? They 
establish a really strong personal brand using social media to do it. They talk a lot about themselves and their love of Beverly Hills and luxury and the relationships they have with people who are buying luxury property. They do things like I'm doing right now. They explain the relationships that they already have with their customers and they, um, can I just, can I remark on what you just said? Actually, of course, of course. The one thing I've learned by doing this podcast and also um, doing the things that we discuss through our guests and our conversation, Robert, is what I'm attempting to apply with Mail Riot and my other business. Yes, folks, I run two businesses. The other business pays the bills and Mail Riot consumes all my money. <laughs> <laughs> So true. <laughs> so true. Uh, right. Yeah, I just see it going now. One day it will pay off. If it, you know, pretty soon. Uh, um, they get to be serious, folks. Um, I've just lost my train of thought. No, let's get let's get it back. Let's get this this focus, Jonathan. Um, what we've been talking is what I'm trying to what we're trying to apply here um, is that you're <laughs> you're trying. <clears throat> to build a brand, but things things have just teeny weeny got a little bit complicated because people like doing business with other people. So yeah, you got to have a logo, and you know, got a logo, got the mail right logo. I got the my other business logo. Um, it's a company. It's it's a limited, both a limited liability companies. But people do business with people, so they, they're going to do business <clears throat> with the founders, the owners, P people do business for your company. I don't know what kind of entity you are, um, but they're not, if you're a limited liability company, they're not, they're not doing business. They're doing business because they trust you, Robert. They like you. They think you know what you're talking about and you're not a bullshitter. So... Um, um, so they do business and it's the same with me hopefully they don't think I'm a bullshitter I, I, I try not to be I could waffle but um, I do it because I'm enthusiastic about the things I'm talking about um, but that's the dicey thing because people think if you're trying to build a brand in 2018 it's going to be about you and if you can't put yourself out there and put, your, put a face to the brand I think you've got problems yeah. And I, so to capitalize on what you're saying, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And that's it. That's also what I'm trying to say is that I think that, that part of the way you cut through the noise is you use your authentic voice to do so. Gary Vanderchuk and a lot of other people that I respect and admire inside social media, the social media marketing space have all said, basically, you know, all that social media does is allows us to speak with our authentic voice. Well, I, I've, got, I've got a lot of respect for the old Vanacek when he was establishing his online wine business and when he really, through that great success, through his own sweat equity, he really got a voice in social media. The modern-day Vanacek, I, I think he's, some of what he talks about is just bullshit, really, Robert be quite truthful about it but that's my personal take on it yeah no that's fair and, and that's fair and the dude's running a 500 person marketing agency and he's become more like a motivational speaker at a very high yeah. level so so i get what you're saying but i don't want to get lost on that tangent no. all i was saying is this is that what he did whether you like it or not it's doable and we can do it in real estate and that's what what real estate agents should be doing to cut through the noise so one and this is the advice that I'm, I'm going to boil a three-hour conversation, hopefully, into what will be two minutes. One, I told my client to figure out what they love doing, what they love about Basalt and what they love about Aspen. And then two, take pictures and video of them doing it. And then, and then talk a lot about the lifestyle. Like, why, like I asked them questions, why are people living? Why do people move there? What, what is, and they had a huge, passionate response they love hiking and they love uh they love going to the polo club and i'm like what you're saying to me you need to figure out a way to say that on social media and right now because of your limited budget like one of the things that i i just want makes me tear my hair out don't wait for tomorrow what you could do today in terms of your marketing start right now 
today. If you hear this podcast, you hear my voice, do not wait until next week. It takes 60 seconds to pick up your mobile phone and talk about something you're passionate about. You, Just need, to, you need to get on with it to, today and tomorrow, really. You know, having a, you know, you need to plan things out, but it's not, you know, if you don't start with that first step, nothing's going to happen. One thing, I wouldn't say I disagree with what you've just said, but the only thing sure. is, the other thing that I think is really crucial is, yeah, you, got, you know, you had this conversation, he's passionate, when you asked him why he likes to live in that area around apps, apps you know, um, he's also got to put his mind into what his clients want, you know, his potential clients. Sure. You've got to put yourself, and I have been guilty of this, but I, I'm an old dog now, and I have learnt new tricks. Uh, um, and basically, you really, really got to understand what are you, what is your target audience? Have you got a target audience? If you haven't got a target audience in this in this market where there's so many voices out there, it's going to be hard work for you. If you've got a target audience, a niche, a target audience it's going to be a lot easier for you. What are their drivers? What are their wants? What are their pain points? Sure. And can, that was this, can you offer a solution? That was the second thing that I mentioned to him, and maybe it should be first. But, but you're talking, in, to put that into professional marketing parlance, which, by the way, to our audience, I am self-taught. I am not a, I'm not a pedigreed marketing person. I have learned everything the hard way, which is through sweat and tears. But the... The, the technical detail of what you're saying is you need to figure out the persona of your per prospective client. And that's the very next thing that I mentioned to them. And there's a different persona for basalt and a different persona for Aspen, which is what makes that very confusing for somebody like them. Who's, who's literally five miles away from two incredibly different yeah, real estate two, marketplaces. Totally different markets though, isn't it? Right. Massively different. And that's, I think, where, where a lot of our audience gets lost because, because they're listening and they're going, all right, guys, yeah, we're with you, uh, like persona. But, but what do I do when one persona is here and this guy has a reputation, he knows everybody in Basalt, but he doesn't know everybody in Aspen, even though it is just five miles down the road. He spends but his time also, um, it's not a problem because um, in his local market, he could use he could use face to face marketing. He could use the Buffini mythology quite effectively for, for that. <coughs> Sorry, that's all good. <coughs> so my co-host is dying. Everybody, <laughs> and for the absent, um, for the larger market, which is going to be web based, he could have a totally different uh, marketing strategy, couldn't he? Oh, he could. He could. And, and, and honestly, the, the, the same strategy applies for both areas. You develop a persona and he felt like he had a kind of a dialed that dialed in for basalt, but he didn't have it dialed in for Aspen. And so part of the homework that I gave him at the end of the call was go talk to the people that you know, because he's lived there for many, many, many years. So actually driving five miles down the road or talking to other people that he knows in real estate, it's just something he hasn't done. It's not something he couldn't do. He has the connections already. He just needs to talk to them and say, who is the average person and what do they talk to you about when they're getting ready to buy a $7 million home in Aspen? Who is that? Is that a, a CEO, an internet entrepreneur, a celebrity, a little bit of all those things? And if so, what's the common thread that, that, that connects the persona? In other words, do all these people have a similar reason for wanting to buy some property in Aspen? And if the answer is yes, you then connect that to what your personal passions are and you start talking about those things so that you can connect into those personas. And then the last piece, John, before you immediately tell, tell everybody what the last piece is before I get a chance to, is you find out where those people are. So let's say your persona is a CEO. Where, where do CEOs reside on the internet? Because they're there somewhere. And the answer, of course, is LinkedIn. That's where they are. So now you have the persona. You have... Uh, part of your messaging figured out and you've got where the people reside. So now, you know, my CEOs are on LinkedIn. I know these are the things they're interested in. So what's the final step? You produce the content and you create a LinkedIn profile and you go to groups where maybe you're the person that has your persona resides, such as where do CEOs go? I can tell you in where they go in real estate. I'm in a, in a mastermind with some of the top names in real estate. And what do we talk about? We talk about technology and how it's impacting the industry. And so there are places and groups, I promise you, 
where these top flight executives exist because they need to go someplace to keep their edge. You just have to figure out where that is, develop a similar edge and get in, get access to that group and then subtly start to talk about, again, it just hits all the point of your personal messaging. Like I always talk to people about marketing and SEO and, and I'm evangelical all the time about owning your own website. You are too. That's our messaging though. Because then people ask us questions about our companies because we're passionate about our message and it connects into our audience. So that's the advice I gave this, uh, this realtor in, uh, in Basalt and Aspen. I think that's great. We need to go for our break, Robert, and we'll be back and we'll be continuing this great discussion. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. Sure. We're coming back. We're delving into some of the fundamentals of SEO, but we're really starting from the ground up. Because if you don't get the if you don't get these fundamentals, you can do all the other stuff and it just won't work out. Right. So on we go, Robert. What's the next stages? You know, well, the next the stage actually, of the brain. Yeah. Fi- finally, so what we're really talking about, just to separate it for our audience, and I, I'm gonna I am gonna to 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 not correct you, but just, just add an element to the conversation, which is we're really talking about content marketing right now. That's, that's developing a content message. Now SEO is, is fine, building a, a platform, a destination where that goes. And that's where SEO search engine optimization starts to come in because you really need a website to even have the conversation about search engine optimization. So everything else we're talking about, you could do on Instagram. You don't need a website. You don't need SEO. You could just, it's just content marketing. But now let's just say that you want a single focal point for all, because you can post the same piece of content on Facebook, on Instagram, a hundred different places. But let's say you want to drive all those people to a single destination and then convert them into a name and number that you can use. That's where SEO comes in. That's when you build a website and you, you own the website, which is what you, we've talked about. And, but I prefer and would suggest to everybody that you be in the habit of, of, developing good content and understanding who the persona of the person is that you're trying to attract, which now makes building a website and doing keyword optimization and all that stuff that, that impacts well, SEO. There's even hybrids, isn't there? Because fundamentally I was talking to one, you might not agree with this, but uh, well, I don't know. Um, it's a hybrid solution. You know, with the mail, right, we offer some WordPress websites um, we offer two levels, um, and then we use paid traffic to drive people to those sites, right? It's a classical right. model. Your model's different. You know, you build custom websites, um, and you help your clients with content, you know, that, you know, ranks. Well, um, I'm talking to one client. They've got a great blog on WordPress, but they, they want to use my system, I'm talking to them on Friday that hopefully they're going to sign up and we're going to have our site with the search with our leads and we're just going to add a link to their blog because they're getting good traffic to their blog and they actually got some decent content. And I said, you continue with that and that they host that themselves with a hosting company and it's a great blog. So that's a possibility, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's in, in, in marketing. Once you have good content, you can absolutely, there's many, 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 many ways to drive traffic. The, the way that I get evangelical about what I'm known for is the organic method, the inbound method, where you kind of wait a long time and you get ranked in Google and you drive traffic that way. But honestly, you can pay traffic and send it to, to content that you've got. What, right I w- what I wouldn't do, and you agree with this, and I agree with you, is... <laughs> I wouldn't rent a site off somebody and spend a load of time building great content on somebody else's lease. lease. I would, if I'm going to do that, I want to own it. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. And um, that's, I, I agree passionately and I'm, I'm going to leave it at that because, because I've said this so many times, you've said it so many times, but no, no way. Why would you create something that you own? The only examples of that where you should put your content on sites is, is, is social media sites like Facebook because you don't own those sites, but you're, you can repurpose 
the same content. Whereas when you put it on a website and you're using it for SEO, you can't really repurpose it a whole bunch of different times. You have to leave it there. And since you have these restrictions, I, I look at me, I've gone off. Yeah, and it's all my it. fault. I apologize. Like, I, I right, put a carrot in front of you. I'm off to the races. I can't stop myself. It's all my fault. Myself. It's all my fault. I can't I, stop I, myself. Anyway, he, it's, it's and I do agree. Own your site if you're gonna if you're gonna build great content. There's no doubt about that. And then the next things are promoting that content can can absolutely mean what you said, the hybrid method, paying to get some traffic to it, and then also waiting for the search engines to kick in yeah. and recognize it. I have no problems with that. So I do agree with what you said. And I actually I agree I agree with any method that's gonna give a good return for the value to a real estate agent for their advertising dollars. The reason that I so constantly hammer home organic and SEO is, is I, I am in the unbelievably blessed position that I even have access to one of the top realtors like marketing data in Tallahassee. And he has just done a year long analyst and he, he uses everything. Zillow, Trulia, he has four websites. Like the, the amount of marketing he has is insane. But guess what gives him the best return for the investment by miles? Not even a close comparison. SEO. You, their, their return on if value. You, if you can get it set up, if you can, if you can look to the medium long term and you know, you've got enough money to allow you to do that, the return you're going to get from what Robert's just said is going to be mind-bending return but not for one month not for six months for year after year after year the return unless right. you can keep it up but and it, the added thing because I, I gotta throw this in because people don't realize this like if if this client was able to sell his website he would be able to sell it the website not the business just the website he'd be able to sell it for probably one or two million dollars so he'd so. get back every dollar he ever spent plus times 10. So SEO is the only thing that we can talk about where it's an investment. It's not an expense done, right? Done long enough term. Yes. It's an expense up front, but long term during the scope of the business, it's just the same thing as building a house versus renting a room. You build a house, you do improvements, you change the pool, you improve the kitchen, you do all these things, but guess what? And yeah, it's, it's, it's horribly expensive when you're doing those things and you have problems with the contractors and shit goes sideways and everything's wrong. But when you sell the house, you get $250,000 extra that you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't make all those improvements and go through all those things. So and let's, get, let's get back to Aspen and let's get yes. back to sure. this example. Sure, so sure, sure. with a greedy local market, you yeah. might be okay staying with the Buffini mythology, as I call it. Uh, um, but Aspen, you know, it's a freaking, cla you know, what can he do tomorrow to start getting, let's say he's got a website and he wants to get people that are looking at, at Aspen. Well, what can well he, he, start doesn't have doing? A, he, he doesn't have a website, but what he can start doing tomorrow and what I told him to do today is he can copy Joyce Ray's Instagram strategy. She's one of the legends in, in luxury real estate. She, she was the first woman in history to sell over $100 million in residential real estate ever. And she did that back in the 70s. So she is legendary and she is on Instagram marketing properties on Instagram. So what do you do today? You copy her. You look at her content. You see how she's hashtagging, what she's taking pictures of, what she's posting, and when is she posting it in, in relationship, like a week in front of a, an open house. Like you look at everything she's doing and you calculate it and then you just copy it. And yes, you can do that today, right now, ahead of the, you know, that, the Aspen market. And you know what the funny thing is I love about real estate? This guy does not need to have the listing. He can find any listing that's available right now in Aspen. Go with a camera because he's a licensed agent. He has access to the property. He can then film the property and, and copy the content, do it all legitimately, and then immediately, like today, tomorrow, he has a marketing strategy for a $7 million property. So that's, that's what I told him to do, and that's what I would do. Like, and YouTube, like, the two hottest properties at the present moment, I feel, if you're going to do the things that Robert is Instagram and YouTube, that 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 they are growing networks. They are people love Instagram and they freaking love YouTube videos of 
housings, houses in Aspen, they just gobble it up, won't they? they just, oh, good just, Lord, yes. Luxury. We all want to, and, and you know what? The traffic increases the ranking of the videos. So, so it doesn't matter that 90, 99% of these people are not buyers. It doesn't matter at all. You're, you're creating something that people want to see, which then makes YouTube rank those videos higher, which increases the traffic, which increases your audience, which gets you a better and better and better chance to get in front of that one person that does have $7 million in the desire to buy a house in Aspen. And because you've positioned yourself as somebody doing a good piece of content who's passionate about the area, you at least get the introduction. And that's all that we as marketers can hope for. Just now, what about getting some kind of, you know, if you're not going to do, if you can't afford to get the a really great website, what about getting a blog up and what's the difference between a blog and the kind of websites that you probably build for clients is how can you describe it to our listeners really well so so you touched on a couple of points you can go to a website called theme forest buy a real estate theme that has a blog connected to it and set it up and get it online in, in about six or seven hours um well maybe maybe if you maybe. if you've got some experience with it yeah okay so maybe i'm over embellishing but you can do it no it's but time. you're you because you're experienced <laughs> right so but but you could do it and you could do it like if even if you had to hire somebody you could probably hire somebody for a couple hundred bucks they won't do a great job but get it set up get it online let's just agree that you could probably do it for three hundred dollars in, in a week Let's just say that that's what you, you know, I think you could get somebody to knock something up, get it up for 500 that probably knows what they're doing. Okay. Five, whatever it is. So the answer is, um, one, you could do that. And now you're hosting the site and you, you put content on the website and, and that that's one option. You could also go to Blogspot, the Google, the Google blogging platform, which is still around and start a blog right away. I don't know that I would recommend it. You could no, go to I'll wordpress.org. I wouldn't. Which is also free blogs and do that immediately. I would probably say that there's a space for that, though it's not as good by far as owning your own WordPress site. But but you could do it, and it, and it is plug and play. Like you could get it up immediately. Um, you could do the same thing with Squarespace and a number of other. I would, I would be quite honest. I would get a blog web blog site up on Squarespace. There you go. But I wouldn't build. I wouldn't build my full website on that. I would want you know you're you're leasing off somebody again. Um, I would do it on my own hosting, and I would look at WordPress. Um, but if I was doing a blog to get something up quick that looked professionally, that first step, I would, I would look at Squarespace. I would look at Squarespace or Wix. Maybe two 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 systems that I would I would use now. Wix is I'm, I'm, I'm not a great fan of Wix. I prefer Squarespace, but it, yeah, here we go. Right. Um, I feel like you could do a slightly more visually, slightly easier with Wix, but it's not as good for SEO. That's what I would say. But you know what? If we're if we're having the conversation about something, somebody going down and dirty already, they're not SEO experts. A guy like me and a guy like you, we're not going to cut that particular corner because oh, we I'm understand. Not SEO. You're the SEO expert. I'm well, not, I know a fair bit about well, you, you know enough to say, hey, I'm not going to cut that corner. You know, you know that much. So yeah. uh, that that would be my answer is those inexpensive solutions. And then I'd start publishing content. People, and, and people pay you money and you get results. They don't they pay me for Facebook results? Stuff. Well, very, <laughs> very similar <laughs> Very similar to you. I'm blessed that they do because if they didn't, I wouldn't be able to do this podcast with you. I feel like my clients are paying me to, to have this chat. Um, the, yeah, so yes. But, you know, that, as you've pointed out, so you said something earlier and I, I do want to touch base on this. To be a true expert inside the technology space because, because John and I were talking earlier and, and he was saying to me, you know, no offense, Robert, but but SEO or, or is really not that complicated. And I agree with him, it's not. But there is a very long list of things that you need to do. And it is a long list. And when and you start it's saying, a changing well, list, isn't it? <laughs> you're right, and it's a changing list. And when you start saying, well, how long did it take you to get, to get relatively comfortable with that list? The honest answer, no bullshit to anybody, is seven years. So seven years of doing and talking about it daily, focusing mostly on real estate not entirely but mostly and like yeah it took a long time because because it gave me a, a historical reference for all the changes that google does make 
and the core set of changes that they don't seem to touch all that often, which then allows me to focus what I feel like is the most important thing. And, and, and look, then, look, Robert, I, I, I speak and I've worked with loads of SEO people. Um, I've got another friend that really knows his SEO. You really, um, he, he joins me on, on a, another podcast occasionally. Um, he knows his stuff and you definitely know your stuff. I've worked with loads of people that said they knew SEO. They didn't. They had no freaking clue. Um, you know, because you can have all the principal folks, but actually doing A, B and then getting a result of some kind is a totally different ball game, isn't it? Yes, a, it is. Uh, it's a totally different. But, but my there. my advice, which is why guys or or everybody or people who may or may not be listening, could just be me and you talking to ourselves right now. But and for forever forward, I will say this: the reason that that I keep saying this, and you keep saying it, everybody keeps saying, it, you know, what you don't need a lot of expertise for is just creating a good message and putting it online somewhere, doing a, a post or doing a, a video, because if you create a lot of stuff with a really good message, honestly, at some point you might have enough money to hire somebody to give you some consulting. And when that happens, if you, what, what guys like me look for, what we're going to look at first is how good is your content. And if the content is great and all I got to do is make a few technical changes or whatever to, 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 to get Google to receive the content differently, that's the easiest SEO puzzle in the world. So what should you be doing guys? Cause we're probably going to close here soon. You should be figuring out how to produce great content that, cuts through the noise that circles back around to the way we open the dialogue. That's how you're going to do it. Create your messaging, figure out who your clients are, figure out what their interests are, figure out if you personally have things that you're passionate about that match their interests and then talk about those things. Well, that's so just wrap it up because fundamentally what Robert's just said is, you know, he can use all his skills, but he's not a magician. If there's no real meat, real content, that your target audience would be interested in. He's not a magician. He can't do magic. If, it, if, that's, if those fundamentals aren't there, he can't help you, really. He can get, you know, fundamentally. So let's wrap it up. You know, um, we're going to have some more of these internal discussions. You know, the half hour just flew by, didn't it? Yeah. Me waffling, you trying to get back on point, Robert. But there we go. Hopefully our listeners know us now. The audience is growing. I looked at the figures. Um, somebody's listening to us. The figures are growing. Everything's great. And we'll see you next week, folks, where we have either our expert or we'll be d discussing some of the basic online principles to develop your real estate business and for you to be a great success. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. Bye, guys. We